Well, hi, boys and girls. We are finally here. Day six. God has reached the pinnacle of his creation. He's creating the animals, but then he is creating man and woman in his image. And this is the final day of his creation because he rests on the seventh day. And so we are excited to be here today. And I don't know if you can tell, but I am super excited to be here today because we get to start to talk about things that I really love. So I have to confess to you that I love talking about animals, I love talking about people, and I especially love talking about little tiny things like bacteria. And so we're going to take a look at those today. But I want to remind you that today, as we talk about the animals that are on the earth, as we talk about people, it's fun to remember that God has put these animals here with specific purposes, and that these animals, He is caring about them. You'll hear in each of these little experiments that we do that we say, if God cares so much for these, how much should we also care? And if God cares so much about these things that he's doing, how much more does he care about us? We are excited to come and see these things because God throughout the Bible also refers to himself using images of a lion. He refers to himself using images of eagles. He refers to himself using images of doves. We see God use the imagery of animals throughout the Bible, and it is so exciting to see. We also know that at the final day, when God comes back to reign on this earth, we know that he says things like lions and lambs are going to lay down together. Leopards and goats are going to lay down together. Little kids are going to be able to stick their hands into the nests of cobras and not get bit. And so it is exciting to see throughout the Bible all of God's talk about animals, and we are excited to take a look today at some of the creepy crawly things that are moving around in God's great creation. I am so excited because we are here and we are getting to see some of my most favorite things, which are bacteria. I really love bacteria. They're some of God's smallest creation. In fact, throughout the Bible, God talks about plagues, like when he sent the plagues on Egypt and one of the plagues was boils. A lot of people think that that was actually caused by bacteria, that God sent bacteria into the world to cause those boils at that time. It is so super exciting to see bacteria at work in our world today, and they are all around us, as we'll see here in a second. So we are going to go swab for some bacteria, which means we're going to take a fancy Q-tip, and we're going to go around and see where we can find bacteria. Let's see what we can get. All right, well, we have some things swabbed, and then we rubbed it on these Petri dishes. Now, this Petri dish, it doesn't look like it has anything in it, but it actually has this little thin layer of something called agar, nutrient agar. And this is like perfect food for bacteria. And we've let them grow for a couple days now. Now, before we look at the really gross bacteria, we want to show you what we call controls. So whenever you do science, you have to make sure that what you are looking at is actually the right thing and not something that's just in the environment. So I took some of the water that we were using for our swabs and I put it on this plate to see if there was any bacteria. Do you see anything? Nope, I don't either. When I show you what they look like in a little bit, you are definitely going to know they are bacteria. But we also wanted to make sure that we weren't getting any bacteria out of the air. And so I let one plate stay open just to see what was coming in through the air. And look what we found. Can you see those? There's one right here, 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 and here. They look like little white dots. Those are bacteria. Those are bacteria that are growing. And it's not just one. It's billions of bacteria right there. Those are bacteria that are in our air that we're breathing right now. And it's nothing to be afraid of because our bodies are meant for that. Now let's look at something that's a little less gross. How about a cell phone? What do you think of that? There's a couple right here. There's one right there. There's one right here. There's some fuzzy stuff right here. That's mold. And then we've got a big one down here, a couple big ones down there. That's all off of a cell phone. Pretty gross, right? What about this one? Remember what I swabbed? Toilet. 
right there. See that big one right there? And there's a couple around here. That's the toilet. Now here's something I want to show you. Toilet, cell phone. Do you notice much of a difference? Me either. The cell phone is about as clean as the toilet. Pretty gross, right? All right, so now that we've seen two of those less gross things, let's move on to what we actually have on our body, okay? So first, I swabbed my son Cedar's ear. Do you wanna see what bacteria were growing in his ear? Not a whole lot. We've got a little bit right here, 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 but they're fairly tiny. Not a whole lot of bacteria in his ear. He's doing a good job with his bath a lot time. What about our hands? We use our hands for everything, right? Well, here, here's from our hands. But I did something super secret with this one. Down here, you see some bacteria where I'm pointing right here. That was just took my hand, put my finger on it. But then I decided to go and wash my hand. That's right here. There's actually more bacteria after I washed my hands, probably because I dried it with a towel and that towel must have had a bunch of bacteria on it. And then I did this down here. I used hand sanitizer and then as soon as I finished with the hand sanitizer, touched it right on there. There's still stuff growing. And so that reminds us that we need to be extra careful. We need to make sure we wash our hands and we wash them good and the towels that we use to dry off are good. And hand sanitizer, while helpful, it's not always perfect. But what about this? I also swabbed my daughter, Adabel. I swabbed inside her nose. <laughs> Do you see all of that growing back and forth and back and forth? There's some really big colonies like here, but then there's these tiny colonies all over it. That's what's growing in our nose. And I know that seems super gross and super scary, but it's actually a good thing because that means that when we breathe in all of those bacteria that are in the air that sometimes aren't so good, these bacteria that are in our nose, they actually kill those bad bacteria so that we don't get sick. And so these, bad bac or these good bacteria that are in here, that's a good thing and we want them there. Now let's look at one last one. I swabbed my foot. Yeah. Ugh, yeah. It's pretty gross. Now this big one right here, that's actually mold and you can tell because it's got a bunch of of things coming off of it, so it's actually fungus, but there is a whole bunch of bacteria on it, because think of where your foot goes. You walk around all day on that, picking up everything off the floor where everybody else has stepped. That's what it looks like. So next time somebody says, hey, stick your toe in your mouth, I would say no. Now, this is important to look at, especially when we look at the stuff in our body, because remember how I told you that the bacteria in our nose protect us from maybe the bad things that are out in the air? That's a good thing. God has given bacteria on our body, all over us, in our nose, in our ears, all over us, in order to protect us, in order to keep us healthy. These bacteria can be found in our stomachs to help us digest food so we can eat it. They can be found in our lungs, helping us so that we don't get sick. They can be found in our nose so that we don't breathe them in. They can be found on our skin so that bad bacteria can't grow and cause infections on our skin. God has put bacteria all over us and all in us. The fact that we have bacteria like this growing in our nose, the smallest, tiniest of living things, reminds us that God cares for us so much. He loves us to the point where he puts these in us to protect us and keep us safe. Well, like we saw, and like I told you, the biology, the bacteria, the yeast that live on our bodies, they are unique to us. In fact, we think that the bacteria that live on each of our bodies is only unique to us and that it is as unique as your fingerprint. But what we do know is that our fingerprints are definitely unique. We have never found anybody, even twins, who have the exact same fingerprint. And that's why we can use it to tell who people are. And that's why when we take our fingerprints, we can know it's exactly you and not anybody else in all of creation who has that exact same fingerprint. So we're gonna to work today on trying to figure out if we could see my friend Miss Becca's here fingerprints. And so what we're gonna do is we've got a little bit of a weird setup, right? We've got a hot plate under here, a little very technical foil boat, some super glue, and a freshly washed spoon. So 
Miss Becca, what we're going to have you do is can you take all of the super glue and help me fill it up? And we want to fill this boat, this little foil boat, with as much super glue as we possibly can. We want to try to make sure that I don't spill any on this desk because that would stick pretty much instantly. Now remember, the super glue, it's toxic. So if you do try this at home, don't sit there and play with it. Don't stick it to your fingers. It doesn't come off at all. And so we're just going to fill this little boat up. All right. Now that we've got our boat filled up, we're actually going to take this and we're going to try to heat it up. Now again, don't try it without your parents' help because when you heat up this super glue, it's not very kind and it actually gets to be a little gross. So we're going to set it right there and start heating it up. But what we also need is we need a fingerprint. Can you stick your finger right on that spoon, please? Yes. Are you sure you want that one? I don't know. Are you sure? <laughs> yes. I think she's sure. All right. So it's kind of hard to see, right? It's really hard to see a fingerprint there. We need to make it show up even better. So we're going to put it right there. Take this and cover it up because we don't want any of those yucky fumes to come and get us. We're going to let that set for just a little while and come back and see if we can see that fingerprint a little more clearly. All right, well, we have waited about 10 minutes now and we are going to check and see if there's a fingerprint that has shown up on this spoon because we've let it set for a little while. Now, one thing I want to tell you is if you do try it at home, remember, we put those things that don't smell very good under this to keep all those stinky fumes in there. We want to make sure we keep those stinky fumes in there. So we're not going to just lift it up and say, here it is. We want to try to keep that on there until it cools down and all those stinky things go away. So we're going to try to just lift it up a little bit and pull out that spoon. And can you see that? Whew. It's smelly. It shows up perfectly. You can see every part of this fingerprint. You can see how there are ridges and there are dips and there are loops and there are all the different shapes that we would classify in a fingerprint and it shows up perfectly. You might even be able to see, yep, you could see where my fingerprints were on the spoon when I held it up so that Miss Becca could stick her fingerprint on. We see this and we remember that God cares so much about us that this fingerprint here is unique to only Miss Becca. Nobody else in all of creation ever since the history of the world has had anything that looks like that. It's only for Miss Becca. And that reminds us so much of how God cares for us, that he cares even to the point of putting one unique fingerprint for one person. And he designed this himself and designed it in a way that is special to us. Well, that was super neat to be able to see what Miss Becca's fingerprints look like when we take a look at a spoon and the fingerprint that went on it. And what's cool to me is if you know much about fingerprints, you know that the reason we all have unique fingerprints and that all of our fingerprints are different is because when we were inside our moms being born, our fingers were touching everything around us. And whatever our fingers were touching, that's the imprint that we have on our fingerprints. And so as we're moving around, you can imagine how we're touching different things as our fingerprints are forming. And this reminds me of something so cool because the Bible says that God himself has knit us together. He's actually sewed us together inside our mothers and that he has built us in such a way. Now, I think that's cool because Another way that we see that, we can't actually see babies being born necessarily, although we can see different types of sizes that compares to a baby being grown. And we think things like, well, a baby's the size of a pea, and then it grows to the size of a grape, and then it grows to the size of a tennis ball, or maybe a mango, or a cantaloupe, or a watermelon. That was one of my favorite things to do when we were having our kids, was watching as they grew bigger and bigger and thinking how big they would get. So we're going to do something here with a couple different eggs. And the reason I like to do this with eggs is because it helps us to see what it's like when things are growing. So eggs have everything that a chicken needs in order to grow. You start from an egg that has nothing into it and a baby chicken forms inside there and they get nothing else from the outside except for what is in that egg. And so when you crack an egg open and you see that yellow yolk, that's what becomes a chicken. The white stuff around it, the egg white, 
that's all food for that chicken as it's growing bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, sometimes you can take a flashlight and shine it up to an egg and be able to see that chicken growing inside. I don't have any eggs that have chickens growing inside, so I want to see if I can show you a little bit more about what the egg looks like from the inside. So we have two eggs that I have let sit in vinegar overnight. The reason they look a little bit different is because this one, as you can see, I didn't dump it out at all. It looks pretty brown and a little gross on top. And so I emptied this one out and put new vinegar on it in the morning. I'm going to go dump these out and show you what these eggs actually look like after we take their shell all away. All right, I have dumped off all the vinegar so that we could see these eggs now. Now what's cool about the eggs is when you take them out, a normal egg would look like this. Brown shell, kind of hard, can't squish it. This egg, white, I can squish it, and it bounces. It's pretty cool. What we did is we took the vinegar, and because vinegar is acidic, we dissolved all of the brown shell outside of it. The reason that this cup had all that brown stuff on top is because when I dropped these eggs into the vinegar, within the first couple of hours, the brown part of the shell had already dissolved away and all that was left was just a white shell. And then we dissolved the rest of the way so that now it's just a squishy egg. Now here is where you could take this egg and if you held up a bright light to it, you would be able to see the yolk inside and you'd be able to see what that yolk looks like. And even if you look at it now, you could kind of tell that it's got a yellow color to it. That's not because it had a brown shell. That's because you can see a little bit of the yolk through this egg. Now remember what I told you. This egg contains everything that a chicken needs to grow. It's a lot like seeds. See, in your packets that you got to take home, you had instructions on how to take seeds and grow them in a Ziploc bag with a little bit of water and a paper towel. You also had directions on how to grow them in a little cup full of dirt. The reason we can grow a seed with just a paper towel and water is because that seed contains everything, just like this egg does, that you need or that it needs to be able to grow into a small tree. Now, obviously a chicken, it's gonna need to eat once it's born. A tree, once it sprouts, is gonna need more nutrients from the soil. But God has already given chickens, it's already given trees, everything it needs to start growing in these tiny eggs. And so that reminds us that God cares so much for us that he gives us everything we need. If he will give a chicken what it needs inside of an egg, if he will give a tree what it needs inside of a seed, how much more will God give to us? But there's something else cool about eggs. Remember I told you this one's kind of hard, kind of hard to squish. It's not like these where you can just sit there and squeeze them back and forth and it feels like rubber. This one's so hard that when I try to squeeze it, it doesn't crack open easily. God has made this egg through something called physics so that from the outside, it's really hard to break. If you've ever tried to crack an egg when you're making cookies, it's hard to break. It takes a lot of force. But for the chicken on the inside, breaking out of this egg, super easy. They take their little beak and they can just peck a little bit and it breaks open with no issue. You could see even still this here, I've taken all the shell away and when I squeeze it, guess what doesn't happen? It doesn't pop. Why? The shape of the egg is so perfect in the way that God made it that it is really, really hard to break unless you're on the inside. God cares so much about chickens that he has designed eggs in the perfect way and he cares even more about us. Well, we have unfortunately come to the end of our couple weeks together, getting to learn about God of creation, how he took six days to create everything seen and unseen, and on the seventh day he rested. See, all of creation from day one until now has been moving towards the crown jewel creation, when God made man and woman in his image and put them on earth. But God did this as an act of love. Creation was God's great act of love because he created the world knowing that you and I would do things that aren't right and that we would walk away from God, and yet God still created us. God knew before he created the world that one day his own son Jesus would die 
because of the things that you and I do wrong, and yet God still created us. God in creation was showing us his love and that knowing that while we would still do things wrong, he would create us and love us and take such great care to make it so that our fingerprints are different, to make it that our DNA is different, to make it that not a hair can fall from our head without it being the will of God our Father in heaven. All around us, creation shows us the beauty, the detail, the amazing creativity of our great God. I hope that as we have covered these last five weeks that you have seen a little glimpse as to how great and creative God is. Boys and girls, we looked at just such a small amount of what God has done, is doing, and will do in His creation. We want to encourage you to go into the world and see what God has done. See what he is doing right now. Science is not a bad thing. Enjoy what God has created. He has given it to us to remind us to be in awe of him. Like the stars in the sky, like the light that is all around us, be in awe of what God has done. Thanks for hanging out with us these past couple weeks. We look forward to being able to have an actual vacation Bible school in the future, but we have enjoyed having a chance to do a little bit of science and get a little messy with you boys and girls over these past couple weeks. Have a great summer.